State Board of Directors. And so he's going to talk about what we can do for young atheists. Kevin Mayer. He says, I love God. 
his hair is nicely combed, he has freckles. Um, upstanding kid right there. So that's what happens when you believe in God. So what does a non-Christian look like? <laughs> so his sleeves have been ripped off in a fit of anger. Um, apparently it's not even colored in all the way because we just rip off, we don't even wear clothes. Um, he has alcohol in his hands. It says, the guy is saying like, cussing, God isn't real. He has piercings down like the side of his face. Um, he has tattoos, but they're sticking out of his skin. Like, that went wrong. Um, I don't even know what he's smoking. And he has a unibrow. Like, seriously? So here's the thing, though. This kid is eight. Do you really think his pastor is sitting him down and saying, let me tell you what an atheist looks like? I, I don't think that's happening. And I don't think his parents are doing it. So where is this coming from? And I think these kids tend to develop, especially when they're in that environment, they develop this perception of what, what it is to be us and what it is to be them. And them is all of you guys. It's all the atheists, the people who don't believe in, in Jesus and all that stuff. And the thing is, this kid's going to grow up, and at some point, he's going to encounter an atheist, maybe in high school, maybe in college. And so this is what we have to go up against in a lot of places, definitely Texas. Like, you have to deal with that image. So, how do we combat that image? That's an issue we have to deal with all the time. And I think, you know, for me, I became an atheist when I was 14, my freshman year of high school. And I think, from what I've heard, that's the case for a lot of people. Like, they knew they were atheists, they knew something was fishy about what they're, they heard in church. And it happened around that age. So, for a lot of people, you walk around and you're like, I, I can't be an atheist, because that's what an atheist is. And sometimes when you're, even when you're open about it, the people around you think that's what an atheist is. And it's really hard for a lot of these high school age, even younger kids to deal with that. So that's kind of the gist of what I want to talk to you about. I want to show you a video of a high school atheist. She's a young woman. Um, and I don't know if you've all seen this before because it happened about six years ago. And this is a high school atheist who had to deal with crap at her public school because she was an atheist. Have you heard this story before? Um, so let me play this video. Um, I'm not usually an emotional person, but watching this, it's one of the few things that really, you just tear up when you see this thing. So let me play this for you. Then came basketball season. But at the first game, everything changed because after the game, the girls gathered to recite the Lord's Prayer. I didn't think they had religion in sports, but when it came to basketball, they would pray before and after practices, they would pray during games, and, you know, praying was a tradition for them, and that's what they said. Even the other team joins in, and from the stands, school officials too, says Nicole. All the teachers that work at that school, the administration had their hands down, they're saying the Lord's Prayer with the kids, coach has his head down, it's a thing that everyone does. It was uncomfortable for Nicole because she's an atheist. So did you say, no, I'm an atheist, I won't yeah. do it. Well, I told the coach, I was like, oh, I don't believe in God, I'm an atheist, so he's like, go to the locker room. Just. Nicole says, once she said she was an atheist, your relationship with the other kids changed. Uh, yeah. Hello? Uh -huh. <sighs> Sorry, go That's on, that's on. I'm going to slack practice. And I don't like that. It's just like like Students called her names, she says. You know, they would call me devil worshiper. I walked down all those people would laugh at me. They would look at me really weird and stare me down. Then she says, teachers joined in. Yes. What would they say? This is a Christian country and you don't let me get out. When a kid's hear a teacher say when she goes to the bathroom, I hate that girl, what are you telling the kids at a school? That's a gang, man. Religious gang. School administrators kicked Nicole off the basketball team. They said she was bad for team morale and that she'd stolen another student's sneakers. Did you take the other girl's sneakers? No, I borrowed it from her and people saw me give it back to her and, and she said thank you. You were late to practice nearly every day. Actually, I was early to practice every day and I ran my laps before the coach got there. A year later, Nicole was allowed back on the team. This time, when the prayer started, Nicole stayed outside the circle. And so I just stood outside and said the pledge of allegiance without the under God. Without the under God. The next school day, she was suspended 
Fearing for their daughter's safety at school, Nicole's parents decided to homeschool all three of their kids. In place of sports, Nicole now focuses more time on music. She taught herself to play classical piano. And she joined her dad and brother to start a family. They're getting paid gigs. I hate school, but I don't want to go back to that school. I tried going back to that school for two days, and I couldn't handle it. So for now, Nicole's dreams are on hold. Like, that happens. And you all have heard many stories, I'm sure, in recent memory that sound just like that. So here's the thing. That happened about six years ago. Um, there's a book that just came out, like, maybe a couple weeks ago. It's called The Good News Club by Cap, uh, Cap, uh, Catherine Stewart. And uh, she actually references Nicole in the book, and this is one of the things she says. For every Nicole, there are perhaps thousands who quietly join the circle and mumble the words. Many students praying that their sporting endeavors are themselves not theists, members of other religious traditions, but they know that the locker room is no place for dissent, that a refusal to participate could be seen as a lack of commitment to the team. They learn they have to pray to play. Like, this stuff goes on in high schools everywhere. So, this happened about six years ago. Um, this happened in Oklahoma. And this happened before we started really talking about atheism in a big way. I know some of the books were out, like The God Delusion was out by then and stuff, but the blogs weren't around. The Secular Student Alliance hadn't become as big as it is now. So, you know, I heard about that story. It's devastating. And I actually had the chance to meet Nicole a little after all this stuff went down. Uh, of all places, I happened to meet her the opening day of the Creation Museum in Kentucky. <laughs> so, I, I can tell you now, Nicole's doing really well. In fact, she has a singing career, which is really nice to hear. Um, yeah, it's awesome. She goes by like the, the name Nikki Sky. Um, but that happened a while ago. So here's the question I want to ask. Um, is it getting better for young atheists? Because yes, that happened in Oklahoma, but it's not like it's that much better in what we perceive as liberal states either. And I think, yes, it's gotten a lot better. So what? How, how does that happen? A uh, few reasons. So I want to kind of cover why, why has this gotten better? So one thing is there's just been a demographic shift. Um, and this is something that we might know about or we might have a hunch about, but it's, it's playing out exactly like you might expect. Um, if you can see this, uh, this is a, a slide of how people, how many people claim to be not religiously affiliated. Now, this doesn't just mean they're atheists. It might mean they're spiritual but not religious. It means they're Christian, but they're a Jesus follower. They're not really a Christian. Um, so there is a little bit of that in there, too. But this is for the people born before 1945. It's not a lot. And then you get to the boomers. So this is through 1964, if you were born through there. It's a little higher, 13%. We get to the Generation X, born up to 1980. And then you get to my generation, which is born uh, 1981 or later. We're way up there. That's 26%. What does that mean? That means, a, yeah, that means a quarter of people these days, young people these days, are without religion. They don't hold a religious label. Now, it doesn't mean it's easy if you're an atheist, but it means it's very likely that if you go to school these days at a public high school, you probably know someone who's an atheist and is open about it. And that's a good sign for everybody. And that's one of the things we need to do. We need to encourage those 26% or whatever fraction of them are atheists and agnostics to start saying as much, because that's part of the way you overcome this problem. Um, and while we're on the subject of demographics, I just I saw this and I was like, oh, this, this needs to be shown. Um, when you talk about approval of gay marriage, the same thing, this is not uh, age, this is going by religious belief. So at the very bottom, in terms of acceptance of gay marriage, you see the white evangelical Protestants. Not a surprise, they're at the bottom of the list. At the very top there, that blue line, you see the religiously unaffiliated. So, okay, not surprising, we're at the top of that list. What I like about this is, what if you actually take out the atheists and agnostics from there, and you leave in all the spiritual but not religious, or I'm a Jesus fault. Let's say you just isolate the atheists and agnostics. Where are we? We're up there. That's 80%. That's still like lower than it should be, but cool. The demographics are in our favor. Now we need to help these students who are not religious say as much. 
Here's another thing that makes it better now than it was six, seven years ago. The Christians helped us out. And there's a thing that happened in 1984 called the Equal Access Act. Basically, in, and I, I hope I'm saying this correctly, but in 1984, Christians wanted Christian groups in high schools everywhere. And so uh, Reagan passed a law that basically said if your school offers any sort of extracurriculars of any sort, you cannot stop them if they are religious groups, if they're philosophy groups, whatever. Christians loved it because now they can start Christian groups after school and prayer sessions, whatever. But it also means we can now have gay straight alliances. It also means we can have atheist groups at these high schools. Now, we haven't taken full advantage of that, but we're going to start. And we have been starting, and that's another reason things have gotten better. So the Secular Student Alliance actually hired a campus organizer specializing in high school groups. He's sitting right there. Hi, JT. Now, how did that even happen? That happened because there's a philanthropist named Todd Stiefel who said, look at this high school demographic where there's all these atheists. And they, at least when you go to college, Look at, look at what you, the college groups have done here. You guys created a conference here that is it's pretty big compared to the things I used to run when I was in college. Um, but there are high school atheists out there. So Todd said, how can we help high schoolers get the same level of like community and where, can, where they can talk about religious issues? So he actually gave um, a huge contribution to the SSA for the sole purpose of hiring that guy. And so that... Again, it's a big deal because JT, among his many duties, one of the things he does is he handles high school situations. Turns out there's a lot of scenarios where high school atheists have to deal with some BS at their school. Um, in fact, if you take a look at the list, this is the SSA's growth. And I'll tell you, I mean, I used to help run the SSA. I'm no longer doing that, but I still love the group, and that's why I'm mentioning this. Um, the SSA has grown a lot in the past several years, and it's been steady growth, it's growing fast, but that's for all of our groups. And right now it's at like 360 something, and that was what I checked like yesterday, it's probably doubled since then. Um, but if you isolate out just the high school groups, there's the high school groups. And in spring of last year, that number was a little more than 10. It was like 13. That's spring of 2011. Of all the high schools in the country, that's how many officially recognized atheist groups there were that were affiliated with the SSA. So what's happened in the past year? I don't have the numbers for uh, fall of 2011, but I do have the numbers for spring of 2012. Yeah. That's kind of awesome. How does that happen? You, I mean, believe me, I'll give a lot of credit to JT, but, and I love you JT, it's not just JT. Why is that number skyrocketing that much? And part of the reason is, stories like the one of Nicole, stories like that are starting to get out there. High schoolers are getting a lot more educated about what to do if they're high school atheists. And how, what happens if your principal says, no, you can't start a group? What happens if you can't find a teacher to sponsor your group? They're getting a lot more savvier about it. So that's another reason things have gotten better. The media loves young atheists. The media loves good stories. Good stories have a lot of conflict. There's nothing that gets more conflict than high school atheists. So uh, just a smattering of stories all over the place. This is in the New York Times. Um, teenagers standing to speak up for their lack of faith. This is about a high school atheist group, uh, I uh, think in Florida, um, but covered in the New York Times and just an amazing uh, article. If you read the article, you find out, look at all these really intelligent kids that they quote all over the place. You listen to their faculty sponsor, a teacher at the school that everyone loves, and even he, he knows what's going on with these kids. He knows what the situation is for a lot of them. Um, and there's one pullout quote that's just unbelievable to read. And the reason, and I'll show it to you here, um, there are students who do not want their parents to know they're, they belong to an atheist club. I tell my mother I'm at Ocean Club. <laughs> Never heard of Ocean Club, but okay. Another member said her father, who's in the Navy, would be angry and disappointed in her. Um, blah, blah, blah. She asked that her name not be used for fear it would hurt her father. I don't want to grow apart from this. Really disappointing and sad that you were still at that point. But the fact that this is in the New York Times and people can read that and see what young atheists have to deal with, 
That's a huge story. That's a big deal because people get to see what it's like to be a young atheist. And that wasn't always the case before. You didn't always hear those stories. Um, the Southern uh, Law Poverty Center, the one that puts out that hate group list every year, they actually, uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, they released a magazine called Tolerance. And they actually